Hello and welcome to Consulting Ninja. If you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, then hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with any of your thoughts or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. We are going to be using dollar sign lib for efficiency in our SvelteKit applications. I will show you how we can convert our load functions from looking like this to looking like this and our hooks file from looking like this to looking like this. We're going to do that using the lib directory and a server.js file. Stay tuned, that's what we're going to do right now. I get asked frequently where is the best place to fire up a client when you are using SvelteKit. Typically you might see something like this. We have an application with a few pages and each page has a load function that fires up a client, grabs some data and returns it, and we just render that data out. Our load functions for that would look similar to this. We have all of our imports, we fire up our clients, whatever ones that we need, and then we grab whatever data and return that data. So this works, as you can see, it works fine. The problem is, in this instance, we have three pages and all three pages have the same data, and so we're duplicating that code, it's not very dry, and we're also creating three instances of each client. So let's refactor this and put it all inside of hooks. We can take out all of our imports, I have an empty hooks file here, so we'll use that. And now I can take out all of this. And we'll put that inside of our handle as well. And instead of defining these as a, as a const, I can put them in locals like this, event.locals. And you might want to do that with the auth client or Mongo client. Uh, I'll just do the pocket base one for now. And then inside of our load function, we can then pull out locals, delete all of these imports. And instead we'll do a locals.pb. You can save that we can copy and paste over the other load functions saving as we go and now this looks a lot better we have a lot less code we have a lot less imports this does look a bit better the problem is that uh, inside of our hooks file this is going to still initiate a new client every time that the handle function is ran, which is every time a load function runs. Functionally speaking, it looks the same, it feels the same. As far as the data getting to the pages, it all works, but you are slowing things down and you are unnecessarily creating a new instance of the client every time the handle function runs. So what can you do instead? Well, you can put it inside of lib. There's a few different ways to do this. If you look at the documentation, and I will link to that in the description of the video. Inside of source slash lib, you can just simply make a plus server.js file. That will tell SvelteKit only run on the server side. You also can create an entire directory inside of lib slash server and anything in there also will be protected. So you can put inside of your lib directory uh, either a server.js file or you can create an entire directory called server and everything in here will also only be ran server side. It's a way of letting SvelteKit know, hey, do not give access to this code in the client because you're going to be importing environment variables using secret API keys, those sorts of things. You don't want to expose those. So, so long as you put that in a server.js file or the server directory inside of lib, SvelteKit will know, hey, don't expose this. So let's go ahead and make that change now. Inside of that server.js file, let's cut out this import and we'll put that in there. And we'll cut out all of this as well. Cut that out. And instead what we'll do is we will export const pocket base.
and export const auth client and export const mongo. Save that and inside of our hooks, now you can import pb from lib server and here we can just do event.locals.pb equals pb. If you wanted to put the other ones, you could put them just after this one, event.locals.mongo, and then you could put the mongo. Event.locals.auth client. So this functionally looks the same. If we go check out our application, you can see that those load functions are pulling the locals out. We're still able to make use of the client in all of those load functions. The main difference here is that uh, we're only instantiating one client, the client one time, and then we're importing that into our handle function. And we're not creating a new instance every time. We're simply passing the one that was already created. So this is the best way of instantiating your clients. Put them inside of a common server module, in this case, either a server.js file inside of lib, or if you have a whole bunch of them, then create a directory called server and put them in there. You fire them up inside of that file and then just import them into your hooks.server.js and pass them through locals as you would, only this time you're passing the already created instance and not creating a new instance every single time that that handle function runs. I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you did, please thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Take care, and as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.